This is the BTEC Tech Award Level 1 or 2 in Sport. Now, the mission statement of the BTEC route is that it is basically the same as or the equivalent of a GCSE. However, it is a voc vocationally related qualification. Where basic, what that means is learners are developing knowledge, understanding the same way they would do in GCSEs. However, the skills are related to a work industry context. Qualifications are popular and effective. They enable learners to take responsibility for their own learning and develop skills that are essential for the modern day workplace. Skills include team working, working from a prescribed brief, working to deadlines, uh, presenting information effectively, accurately completing administrative tasks and processes. And the assessment procedure is not the case of maybe doing um, two years work and then an exam at the end. There are being constant assessments, mini assessments all the way through the two year period with three summative assessments in total. Um, so they're being assessed continually. So in total, that is what year one and year two will look like. So year one, you'll start with component one and maybe a little bit of component two, or we could uh, do component three delivery where the guided learner hours are split across the three components, uh, 36, 36 and 48. Now, if you look at the weighting, we can see are the three components. Component one and component two are internally assessed. That means they will do their assessments, their report writing, uh, their demonstrations, presentations, all within the school. And component three, which will be done in year 11, developing fitness to improve other participants, performance in sport and physical activity, is an external assessment, which means that is a, it is externally marked. All right, they don't do anything there. They'll go in there and they'll do their assessment and then everything will be submitted to an external verifier. So how you will be assessed? Well, unlike GCSE, like I said, no end exam at the end of the two years. There'll be constant assessment throughout the course. Assessment is chunked, so we've got bite-sized sections of each component. So this doesn't overwhelm the learner, apart from unit three, which is done wholeheartedly. Component one, preparing participants to take part in sports and acti physical activity. As I say, we'll be looking at different physical activity and providers, needs, barriers, where to overcome these barriers. A lot of what happens in um, sports coaching, uh, personal training, strength and conditioning, a lot of it is linked in with the physiology and anatomy that underpins all three of these components, to be honest, and this is internally assessed. Component two, taking part in improving other participants' sports performance is where we uh, will get some fitness-based tests. We'll look at the sports and then we'll do improved uh, sports performance through planning, delivery of sports drills, condition practices. So here you've got a mix of actual sports coaching as well as strength and conditioning, stroke um, fitness training, as well as some skill acquisition as well. So all the elements that a sports coach will need. And then your final component, this is the big one that will be done in the second year, is developing fitness to improve other participants' performance in sport and physical activity. So this covers elements of both one and two and steps on some new ground as well, um, where it pushes into the gym instruction things, um, looks at um, things of uh, everyday lifestyles, uh, different athletes. Basically, you're given a client and you will have to get the best out of them and but make your suggestions realistic. And on that exam, as a series of multiple choice short answers with different synoptics of sports and activities. So you'll learn about different types of training that different athletes will do. Right, how is it graded? Well, on the old spec, we had the pass, merit and distinction. And this still uh, lies for um, level three currently. However, what they've done is they've now changed it to levels based mark schemes, which is the new Department for Education requirements. So everything can be marked numerically. So what they're doing is they've took the pass merit and distinction or what used to be the near pass, which was used to be marked, which is now known as mark band one, a pass, which is now mark band two, the old merit, which is mark band three and the distinction, which is mark band four. And you can see there how you've got from one to three, four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 12 and the different grading descriptors 
across as we go from left to right. What this means is, as we go through our components of both one and two and three, one and two are marked at exactly the same levels. Um, you've got to see the different scores of what you can get. And component three grades slightly different uh, because as I say, it's an externally assessed exam. So they'll do the exam, that'll get sent off. And what happens is the overall grade of the total points is tallied up uh, and they attained by the learners in all three components. So what that means is, if you look at the bottom table there, whether they get a level two distinction, they've got to get 270 points and above, a uh, level, two, level two distinction star, a level two distinction is 240, level two merit down over, a level two pass, level one distinction, level one merit, and a level one pass. So somewhere along that continuum, our learners will grade. There you are for components one and two. That's for component three, and those will be your final grades there. Now, if you've got any questions whatsoever regarding this qualification, please do not hesitate to get in contact with myself, Mr. Oliver, or Mr. Jordan, the head of the department, at the below email addresses. Okay? Any questions whatsoever, please feel free, as I say, to get in contact. Thank you for listening.